Hey, what's up? Welcome to Matt Mix. So I was approached by Amazon uh, to paint some logos on the exterior portion of their building, their distribution center around their loading dock. So they use some courier and delivery companies here locally, and I'm painting six of those companies' logos on their wall. So in order to do this and keep it looking professional and super clean, uh, I'm gonna use a pounce pattern. Uh, if you don't know what a pounce pattern is, stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to do this. It's real easy and the results are really, really awesome. So check it out. All right, so I've, I've done a lot of large, large lettering in a, a handful of my murals like this one in Clearwater Beach. Those, those letters were around seven foot tall, seven and a half. And I did this with a traditional grid method. This was a 90 foot wall in Inglewood. These letters were, they ranged from eight foot to 10 foot tall. And I also used a grid method. Just a lot of measuring tape, a lot of masking tape and drawing lines with a straight line edge. And then to the Atlanta Brave Spring Training Stadium where I actually used an overhead projector and basically just traced right over top of the lines that were shined up on the wall. For this one, I can't do any of that because the background of all these logos has to remain the color of the building. So I can't go drawing lines on the wall for a grid. And I can't have a projector up in the lift with me shining on the wall because I have to do this during the daytime. So I'm going to use a pounce method. So I'm going to pull up my wife's business logo here for an example. So let's say you have a logo that you want or design or lettering or whatever. You can go as small as this. You can print it out on your desktop printer. Take that piece of paper, you want to lay it on something soft, kind of like a, a carpet, a piece of foam, like a yoga mat type of thing, um, or some cardboard is what I like to use if I, if I have the ability to, if I have enough cardboard big enough. So then you take a little pounce tool here and you can buy these on Amazon or you can buy them at hobby shops or craft shops and it's just a wheel with a little metal uh, little metal spikes on it and they just puncture the paper as you roll it across the paper so there's a, sit, a little test line and then what you're going to do is just carefully take your time and use these pounce wheels and follow every line on your design and poke through that paper if you look close there's tiny little line tiny little holes that are punctured through the paper and that's how you're going to transfer the image to the wall so you, you can see the light shining through those now so for me, I'm, I have to go way bigger. These logos have to be at least four foot. That's what they recommended for me at Amazon. They wanted something around four foot. So I had this little projector here. It's just some cheap generic uh, projector. It's just good for me doing small little, little images on walls, nothing huge. So you stack up some chairs some stools or whatever you got to do to get that projector up high enough to shine it up on your wall. So. Typically what happens is when you put paper up on the wall, you take a pencil, you trace the image, take the paper off, lay it on the floor on your cardboard and use your pounce wheel and roll over the lines that you just drew. But since I want to skip that step, I went ahead and put some packing um, foam up on the wall, two, two layers thick. I laid my paper on top of that, taped it there, shine the image onto the paper and then started pounce wheeling the image right on the wall rather than drawing it with a pen, taking it to the floor and then doing it. So I'm just skipping a step. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this method from now on. It saves a lot of time and I can just trace the image right there from the projector. Now there's other ways to do this. You can take your image to a print shop who, who can print on four to five foot wide paper, and have them print out your image, and then you can use the pounce wheel to follow that image on the paper. Or if you have a projector like this, you can do it at home and you don't need to have a print shop print out the paper for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up. It's a lot easier with two hands to get a lot more of a steady rhythm. It's hard to go around some of these tight curves with a pounce wheel considering it doesn't, it doesn't bend. It wants to tear the paper when you go around tight curves. So you gotta work with it and get a little practice. But I'm just gonna follow over every letter here. These thin ones, I'm just going one, one line the bubble letters here, uh, you want to actually follow around the whole outline. And this is the, kind of the way it looks afterwards. For me, I'm not worried about it being super precise because I can clean up those letters once I get them up to the wall. 
So let's head over to Amazon and get started. Alright, so here we are. We're at the loading and staging area. Dispatch area for Amazon. This is Sarasota, Florida, so what I'm doing is I'm just gonna start painting these logos and be putting them up on the wall here above this top line. And I'm gonna be doing one logo in between each of these garage bay doors. All the way down there. The monster, monster size warehouse. So let me show you how I do it. So I was lucky enough that Amazon let me use their lift again. I love driving this thing around. So these logos are gonna be placed about 12, uh, 12 to 13 foot high. So I get to my first spot and I just get some masking tape ready to go so I can hang this piece of paper up on the wall. Now the hardest part about this is if you're outside, you, you have the wind to deal with and this paper just does not want to go where you want it to go when it's windy. It's a fact. But take your time, try not to get frustrated and you eventually get this thing lined up right where you want it. And the key is making sure that it's very level because if any of these logos are a half an inch to a two an inch tilted, you're really, really gonna notice that from the ground level. So these things have to be spot on level. So I, I check, check the level, make any adjustments that I need to, retape it. And then before I finalize it and start applying the chalk to these perforated lines that I use with, with the pounce wheel, I check the level again. So I check the level like three times before I say that it's satisfied. Okay, so I got my template taped to the wall and make sure that it's perfectly level. That's the hardest part. Now I'm gonna make a chalk bag and transfer chalk through these perforations that I made in the paper. So we're gonna make a chalk bag here. So I'm using an old rag. And I'm using some straight line tape. All right, once you got your chalk and your rag, just drag your corners into the center here, and then you just throw some masking tape around that, and then it creates this, a little pouch for that chalk to sit into. So this is my pounce bag, so I'm just, I'm basically just gonna take this chalk filled little bag and start tapping it against all these lines that I created in the paper. Give it some taps and then use use the rag and push the chalk through the hole as well. Kind of. So you're tapping and then wiping, tapping and wiping. So this takes a little while. Take your time, really we've got to make sure that, that chalk transfers through all those little holes. Now you can practice with the pounce wheel to get get a good feel for how much pressure you need to create the size of hole that you need but really you don't you don't need much of a hole at all so before I'm done I pull down a corner and verify that those lines are showing on the wall behind the paper and I just keep it going and I'm just gonna speed this up finish out this first stencil here and then what I'm gonna do is pull the paper down off and show you how it looks once it's on the wall. I'm using a light colored chalk like this bright fluorescent orange um, because it's going on a white wall. I don't really want this chalk to be super visible. I want it to be light enough that I can wipe it away when I'm done if there's any that I didn't get to cover. So as you can see the lines are very very faint and thin but that's all I need. Here's that bottom line of text. Now, for, for cleaner edges, I'll go in with some masking tape and mask up some edges and stuff like that. But for the most part, I'm just gonna grab a brush and my first color of paint, and I'm just gonna start filling in the lines. Just kinda like a coloring book when you're a kid, just start filling in the lines.
So here's that logo finished up. You can see how the pounce pattern allows you to really have the logos super precise and to scale and the way they actually look. Free handing it, this would have been a lot, lot harder and a lot more time consuming. So this is the second logo. I went ahead and just kind of jumped through some of the first steps of hanging the paper up again. You get the gist of that, but you can kind of see when it comes to shapes like stars, which are very hard to draw, the pounce pattern really makes it a lot easier. And I'm just gonna work around these stars and fill in these colors. Now this wall is textured, so it, it, it is hard to get a nice clean edge, but just take your time and use a small brush wherever you need. And, and when you step back from it, it's a nice clean edge and looks professional. Then here's the third logo I did, Optimal US Logistics. Moved on to this one, which is a lot more challenging because I had to freehand those letters. There was no way a pounce wheel was gonna trace around all those letters. And here's the next one, Summit Delivery Systems. And then finally, the last logo, which I believe came out the best. This is Watermark. So as you can see, the pounce pattern helps out a lot. You really don't have to have any artistic skill. You just have to have the know-how of the beginning to end process of pounce patterns. And uh, if you like what you saw here, give me a like and a subscribe, maybe share it if this is gonna help you or your friends out. And uh, join me on the next video coming up soon where I make something else and show you how I do it. Thanks for watching.